Hi, welcome to the Pursuit of Truth. Hopefully this will be the last one of these hour-long clips from Sky News showing, I guess, the inhumanity to humanity. You know, the, the, like the difference between civilians, whether it's Israeli or Palestinians, who are caught up in this fight for land. And the world leaders and the leaders of those countries and uh, Hamas, Israel, in the West, their stoic approach to human suffering. I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think the, the unfortunate thing is with this, from the Israeli point of view, I mean, obviously the massacre, but I mean, from the point of view of having the kidnapping, because I was thinking, like, wasn't it too soon to start this, like, revenge, as, as it's been called? Like the same as America did with 9-11 but I guess with 9 the things I was thinking like with 9-11 it was some time before the invasion of uh, was it Iraq or Afghanistan coming which order it was now it took place when they were trying to get UN resolutions and things like that to try and make it look legal um, but of course they didn't have any um, any need to sort of do it straight away whereas with Israel they didn't have that luxury because of the kidnapping although I suppose a lot of people would say that their bombing of, of, of the area hasn't really been conducive to trying to get those hostages back. But yeah, they are in a hard place because it would be better if there was more time because then we could have seen all these stories because I think a lot of Israelis feel hurt and you hear it in the arguments that when people are... Put, put, well, every time you the journalists bring to them about what's happening in Gaza, they will instantly bring you back to what happened on 7th of October. Look at what happened to the 1,300 or 400 people that were raped, mutilated, killed, innocent people, children, burnt alive. Scenes that we haven't seen since the Holocaust. Um, at this scale, and that's the problem, isn't it? Because there wasn't time to really get through to that, to, to show everyone those things that we're now hearing these things and seeing how brutal it was, how disgusting it was, how inhumane it was. And it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a Muslim or Jewish or Christian. I was sound like I'm doing Roger Walters. So, um, you know, you don't, you don't have to be Palestinian or American or Jewish or Israeli or... Uh, Gazan or Ga whatever the plural of Gaza is you're human beings and we can all see any form of death um, murder is, is is wrong and it shouldn't be happening we shouldn't need to do this it's, it's, when we need to murder each other when humans need to murder humans it means we failed And yeah, it, you know, from the face of it, the view is that obviously Hamas is a terrorist organisation, what they did, what they're continuing to do by keeping hostages. And also, I can't say that what I'm seeing Israel doing is is good either, because lots of children are getting killed. I know, you know, and this next one's going to look at this. Gaza are being run by Hamas, a political party that have done terrorism in the past and obviously the event on October the 7th they can't be trusted and remember the famous maxim that the first casualty of war is truth although truth seems to be the first casualty in any kind of dialogue but and that's you know so it's difficult because obviously each side is going to want to make you feel for them and is going to want to justify whatever they're doing by you know and usually we saw this in Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, it's children that are used to create that empathy. Um, the other thing is also that, like in, in um, 1984, the, an animal farm is the idea of creating the enemy. Big Brother, you have to have, or, or what's in um, Animal Farm, I can't remember what its name is. Um, you have to have somebody to hate. You know, you have to create that character. And usually that's why, you know, like Bin Laden or the... Saddam Hussein or the Adolf Hitler, you know, you create that one person that can create all that hate, same as like one person create all that majesty, like say Jesus or Nelson Mandela 
or Gandhi, you know, you, that you have to create those characters to to get people to, or Churchill, or, or you know, Roosevelt to to try and create the the idea of good versus evil. But this next one is about the hospital that was attacked, which on the face of it, when watching it from the media, they leapt on it straight away, forgetting that this information was coming from Gaza, and, you know, how can we rely upon it? And especially Anne Botling, who was very attackive to the Israeli journalists. If you see the actual visual of it, he gets quite irate. You know, he sort of almost has to stop himself from jumping up and down. Um, at the time when I was watching it, I was thinking, wow, why can't all the journalists be like her? Because they were, she, you could see, she's probably a mother. And there was a difference between how she, you know, was feeling the pain of these people and interviewing this guy compared to, say, Mark Austin, who may well be a father, but he's very like, he doesn't like his worldview being challenged. Whereas she was, you know, you could feel the emotion in her questions. But unfortunately, it turned out, if the if we can believe what's been told, I don't know if Britain have actually even bothered to come up with their um, validation of what Israel and the US have validated that it was actually um, Islamic Jihad, some Islamic Jihad, uh, other organisation, the misfired rocket hit the hospital and it wasn't Israel. And I guess the problem is, is, and this is why, you know, it caused a lot of... Um, anger around the Middle East is because no one believes and of course because they've been mistrusting of each other both of them you know can say whatever and it's difficult to actually discern what the truth is because both of them have objectives in war and both of them don't really want to admit it was them and you know like we know truth is the first casualty so we're left to sort of well Israel put this case and shown some evidence and video and assuming this is what, what we're actually seeing, this is what they're actually purporting, is the actual the truth. Because you don't obviously see the people who are firing the rockets, so you're assuming what they're telling you is true. I mean, it could be a staged event, a false flag type thing. Who knows? That's the problem with, you know, humans are capable of all sorts of things. If you can turn off the gas and the water and electricity, then you can do this. If you can, or, I mean, they've already hit many medical institutions, schools, universities. Um, but obviously they always say, but these are, Hamas have got tunnels or they're, they're being used for military purposes. Even though I'm sure you're still not allowed to do it, even if that is the case, especially if you can't get in the check. So yeah, let's hear about this one. It will go horribly wrong politically for Joe Biden. His authority would be undermined, as would America's ability to shape events in the Middle East, in a part of the world where events have a habit of shaping themselves. James, thank you very much indeed. Let's talk to Alistair Bunkle, who is with me here, our Middle East uh, correspondent. And first, these uh, reports, these claims being made by the Gazan Health Ministry that a hospital has been hit in Gaza City. Yeah, this is the uh, El Ahli Hospital in Gaza City. Um, the report's coming in in the last few minutes that it has been hit by an Israeli airstrike. Now, the numbers that have been uh, published by what I should stress is the Hamas run health ministry uh, estimate between two to 300 dead. Um, we'll wait and see whether that changes or what more comes out in the coming minutes. Uh, but I would also add that this is not, as is the case, for many hospitals across the Gaza Strip, just a hospital. Hospitals have become refuges for people to go to because they are seen as places of safety. They're seen as places which Israel would not strike for very obvious reasons. So if these numbers are anywhere close to being accurate, it is a very, very large death toll on a hospital on the eve of the US president's visit to Israel. Yeah, and we were talking to the Israeli Defence Force spokesman in the last hour about um, you know the fact they've moved a lot of people from the north to the south, yeah. and we have evidence. Uh, Sky News team in the south have, has evidence of airstrikes taking place on buildings in in the south. 
The Israelis have been very clear in the last few days. Benjamin Netanyahu said it only an hour and a bit ago when he was uh, giving a press conference with the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. If you want to go to safety, leave the north and go to the south. And yet the evidence through multiple sources, including our own trusted colleagues, is that the south has been struck repeatedly uh, and the city of Khan Yunus, the bigger city uh, in the south. And so it underlines that there is no place of safety in Gaza. Gaza, the Gaza Strip is very small, 27 miles long uh, by a few miles wide. You know, the idea of finding safe havens, havens in the Gaza Strip is, is frankly um, unrealistic. But given that the Israelis have been so clear about and, and, and so repeated about making these requests for people in Gaza to move from the north to the south, the fact that they have now been striking the south as well, I'm sure, will be a question that President Biden will have to ask them in private. And just a word on uh, what the IDF is saying about there may not need to be a ground invasion. What do you make of that? Well, this came out of a briefing to international journalists earlier. Um, and it's, it's confusing what they might mean by I mean, this is a bit of a sleight of hand. Uh, and I was saying, earlier, you know, I don't mean that maliciously, but bear in mind the Israelis are at war, you know, and they have to manage communications. And sometimes that we've got to be uh, aware that that might mean putting out certain messages that aren't necessarily their intention. All I would say is that every indication is that there is a, a build up that is going to lead to a ground invasion. That is what we have been told by IDF commanders time and time again, day after day. And if you are going to eliminate Hamas, as Benjamin Netanyahu says that they want to do so, how do you do that if you don't have a ground element? Okay, Alistair, thank you very much indeed, and we'll await. Okay, so that's the problem, I think, because of the the north to the south movement, which is my understanding against international law to move the whole people from one place to another um, and then to then target areas in the south when you say that's going to be safe I think that's what gave the journalists a sort of the idea that maybe this hospital was then struck by Israel because we know they've struck universities and mosques and therefore that's the problem. When you do things that are um, questionable, then it makes it easy for people to think, oh, that's you as well then. And I think that was the reason why the journalists jumped on this. And of course, the problem is once the genie's out of the bottle, <laughs> then that's the problem because no one's then going to believe, you know, you always believe that what the first thing you're told is. And yeah. next one. Now we've been hearing uh, heartbreaking stories from the families of people who have uh, been forcibly taken to Gaza following Hamas's brutal attack in southern Israel 10 days ago. Well joining me now is Rachel Goldberg. She's the mother of uh, Hirsch Goldberg Poland, one of those taken from the supernova uh, music festival. Uh, good evening and um, thank you very much for uh, being with us Rachel and I just wonder first of all whether you have managed to piece together um, what happened to him when he was taken. Uh, we have. We have pieced together what happened when he was taken. He was with a friend at this nature music festival. Um, the attack began early Saturday morning and he and his friend and a couple other uh, friends managed to get in a car and try to escape, but they came under very heavy gunfire and rocket fire. So a bunch of these kids pulled over their cars and ran into a roadside bomb shelter, which was then um, approached by terrorists who threw in hand grenades had um, an RPG that they were using and machine gun fire. And most of the people inside these 30, you know, fun loving music uh, aficionados were, um, 
were really massacred in this small, small room. Uh, some of them were luckily uh, crushed under the bodies of dead people or seriously wounded people. There were three young men who were uh, hurt, but were ordered to get up and walk out of the bomb shelter. One of them was Hirsch, my son, who the eyewitnesses who we've spoken to all said his left arm below the elbow had been blown off. Um, he had fashioned some sort of bandage and the three young men were put onto a Hamas pickup truck, which headed toward Gaza and his, um, last phone signal was found inside of Gaza at, um, 1025 Saturday morning, October 7th. And, um, we have no other information about him since then. I mean... That is a truly awful story. What would your message be, Rachel, to those who are holding your son? Well, a few people have been asking me that today. And to be very, very honest, I would, I would really like for them to talk to me, to talk to us and tell us what, what is it? What, what are we trying to get out of this this hostage situation of taking elderly Holocaust survivors, nine month old babies, music lovers who were in the woods at a peace promoting music festival. I, I really would, and I'm not saying it facetiously or sarcastically, I honestly would love to hear what is the ask? Mm. What what do we want from this? I want to understand as a person to the people who are holding all of these hostages. I just want to understand what is the method? What what's the purpose of this method? What is the ask and what is the meaning? Tell me this, how do you think he will be coping with this um, ordeal? Listen, to be honest with you, he had his arm blown off and was taken away in a truck 10 days ago. And I don't know if he bled to death on the truck. I don't know if he's alive. I don't know if he died yesterday. I don't know anything. So. I do know who he is, and I do think that Hirsch is a survivor by nature. He's a very kind and respectful human being. Um, and I think if he is alive and can stay strong, I think he can survive. But again, the knock might come on my door at any time because he may not have made it even into Gaza. Maybe the phone that they found was his because somebody took it off of his body because he was already gone. I know nothing. And just finally, Rachel, how concerned are you by, I mean, there's the talk of the you know, a big military operation in Gaza, there's the airstrikes going on. How concerned are you by all that? And do you have a message for the Israeli military authorities about what is happening or may be about to happen? Look, I'm not a military strategist. I'm not a politician. I'm not a government official. I'm a mother. I'm a human being. In war, horrible, horrible things happen. Um, I, I like to believe that the people in charge are trying to be very careful. And there's a lot of innocent life in, in Gaza, not just the hostages. There are many Palestinian people who in many ways are being held hostage by this situation. And um, I think there's a difference. The, the reality is that in war, Horrible mistakes sometimes are made. However, in massacres, there are intentional actions that are not mistakes. 
that are intentional that happen. And there's a distinction that I think should be definitely stated. Well, Rachel, um, my heart goes out to you. I hope this ends as well as it possibly can for you. And uh, thank you very much for telling your story and coming on the program this evening. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me. Not at all. It's difficult, isn't it? I mean, hearing those stories, it does, you know, evoke the... Um, The Holocaust, you know, the the way Nazi Germany treated Israel's uh, the Jewish people in the Second World War, when she was talking about what happened to Hirsch, there's <sighs> the next one. Well, Sky News, you take Thank care, you. okay? Thank you. Oh, well, let's head back to Jerusalem. Our Middle East correspondent, Alistair Bunkel, was listening to that interview, and Alistair, it's so easy to get caught up in President Biden making his diplomatic Maybe visit to come back to that. What was that? I missed that bit. Maybe I was meant to play that. Oh, I don't think I got all of it. This interview, because of the official hostility towards Palestinians. So the Palestinians in Palestine and in Gaza are silenced. And now Palestinian voices in the West are being actively silenced and, and suppressed. Well, but Salim, thank this you. can't continue forever. Thank you for for giving us your voice tonight and speaking up on behalf of those Palestinians. Thank you so much, and I wish you and thank your you. family well in these most difficult of circumstances. We so appreciate your time here on Sky News. You take thank care, you. okay? Thank you. Oh, well, let's head back to Jerusalem. Our Middle East correspondent, Alistair Bunkle, was listening to that interview. And Alistair, it's so easy to get caught up in President Biden making his diplomatic visit to Israel, you know, the Palestinian Authority president cancelling his meeting with him. There's the, the difficult politics of all of this. But right now, tonight, we're looking at the human cost at a hospital, those who are being treated, those who are seeking refuge. Yes, I mean, what we know, what we can uh, report either as fact or, or pretty close to fact is that there has been a major incident at al Al Arabi Hospital in, in central Gaza City. Uh, the reports are that it was an airstrike by the Israeli military. The Dean of St. George's Jerusalem, Richard Sewell, tweeted saying, disaster, our hospital, al Arabi, has taken a direct hit from an Israeli missile. Now, uh, to put the other side of the story, other side of the incident across, I've spoken to the Israeli Defense Forces tonight. They are looking into what happened. They cannot confirm either way uh, at the moment. They are trying to establish whether or not their aircraft were in the skies over that particular location. And if they were, whether or not this missile was released by accident, or maybe deliberately. So that is what is happening in the IDF at the moment. Alistair, can I, can I just uh, uh, bring our viewers up to date and you as well? We're just getting this from officials in Gaza. They're saying the death toll could reach as high as 800 uh, this evening. Uh, that's what we're hearing from officials in Gaza, the aftermath of that attack on the hospital in Gaza. Uh, 800 is the potential death toll. Um, Alistair, please do carry on. Well, let me bring you another tweet. This is from Médecins Sans Frontières, who uh, people will know as a charity that works around the world in conflict zones. They are operating on the ground in Gaza, and they tweet to say, we are horrified by the recent Israeli bombing of Ahli Arab Hospital in Gaza City, which was treating patients and hosting displaced Gazans. Hundreds of people have reportedly been killed. And then they say, this is a massacre. It is absolutely unacceptable. So that is a statement tonight by Médecins Sans Frontières, um, uh, Doctors Without Borders. We are seeing uh, already a ripple effect of what is happening uh, in uh, what has happened in Gaza. Uh, there have been protests in the Palestinian city of Ramallah and in Hebron. Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian president who is due to meet with President Biden tomorrow in the Jordanian capital, Amman, has cancelled that meeting. That is very significant because what President Biden was due to talk to him about was important insofar that 
Biden is trying to contain this conflict to the borders of Gaza and see it not uh, ripple further into the Middle East and the Palestinian president who uh, is, well, at least in name, not necessarily in reality, is in control of the West Bank, is, is an important figure in, the, in, in that diplomacy. President Biden does arrive here tomorrow. He arrives here in a matter of hours in many respects, and this will be now the backdrop to that visit. There is a lot to talk about between the US President and the Israeli Prime Minister. Humanitarian corridors, hostage release, uh, containing the conflict within Gaza. But I'm afraid the US President is not going to be able to ignore the pictures that you're seeing on the screen now. And that will almost certainly, I'm sure, be a part of discussions he has with Benjamin Netanyahu. Okay. Alistair, thank you. Um, just looking at the news lines that are dropping here to us in the studio, um, we can report um, via the Reuters news agency. Uh, they have had a response from the Israeli military. You'll remember the last we heard from the IDF is that they were investigating what had happened at this hospital in Gaza. Uh, but this coming tonight now, the, the update from the Israeli military via Reuters, um, they are saying their intelligence shows that a Palestinian Islamic Jihad group is responsible for the hospital attack. Uh, Alistair, perhaps I can get you to react to that. We're also hearing the Israeli military saying that a Gaza rocket barrage towards Israel passed near the hospital in Gaza when it was hit. Yeah, so this is coming directly from the Israeli Defence Forces. It's been tweeted by Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, someone who, uh, if you watch Sky News or you've been watching Sky News the last few days, you might be quite familiar with. Uh, he is uh, a, an officer in the Israeli military. And let me just read out uh, his tweet, which repeats uh, some of what you just said, SJ. From the analysis of the IDF operational systems, an enemy rocket barrage was carried out towards Israel, which passed in the vicinity of the hospital when it was hit. According to intelligence information from several sources we have, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad is responsible for the failed launch that hit the hospital. Now, those of you who are not familiar with Palestinian Islamic Jihad, they are uh, a smaller militant group in the Gaza Strip. Uh, Israel, early this year, carried out uh, a, a campaign, an air campaign against Islamic Jihad, lasting a number of days during which they took out uh, many of their senior commanders. Uh, Islamic Jihad, although this is a, a war between Israel and Hamas, Islamic Jihad have been involved in it as well. Now, I, a lot of people will say, well, look, we, we want to see proof uh, of what the Israeli Defense Forces are alleging. Uh, what I would say, just by way of context, and not related to this specific incident, is that um, failed rocket launches whether it be Hamas or Islamic Jihad out of the Gaza Strip, um, do happen. I was about to say they're not uncommon. I wouldn't say that, you know, that it happens regularly, but they do happen. Um, and so uh, it therefore, in my assessment, is a possibility that this was the cause. What I would say, though, um, from speaking to Palestinians, whether it be here in Jerusalem, East Jerusalem or the West Bank, regardless of the reality, whatever that might be and whatever that proves to be um there is a feeling amongst palestinian people now um that they, they just will not believe the israeli version of events and so if we're looking at pictures of if we're looking at pictures of what's going on in ramallah tonight and hebron tonight uh, you know i'm afraid compared to the pictures coming out of gaza that is what a lot of the palestinian people and a lot of the arab world will um prioritize in terms of their assessment of what went on and uh, in addition to 11 days now of bombing the Gaza Strip uh, most people I would suggest in the West Bank and elsewhere Jordan for example where uh, protests have been targeted in the Israeli embassy tonight I'm, I'm afraid whether right or wrong just will not believe the Israeli version of events and that is why this situation not just tonight but more generally in this war is so dangerous and is so prone 
to spilling out of control um, and being beyond anyone's ability to rein it in. I think we can see the, the tweet that Peter Lerner, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner of the IDF, has put out tonight, the tweet that I was just reading out, uh, that explains in the IDF's uh, point of view what happened. Let me read it out again for you. You can see it on the screen from the analysis of the IDF operational systems. An enemy rocket barrage was carried out towards Israel, which passed in the vicinity of the hospital when it was hit. According to intelligence information from several sources we have, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad is responsible for the failed launch that hit the hospital. Uh, something else I'd add, um, given my conversations with the Israeli military over the last hour, 90 minutes, is, is quite clearly the speed in which they are reacting to this um, underlines potentially what uh, a moment this could be in the conflict. We wait to see whether it will be a turning point in this conflict in some way, but I think the speed that they've reacted to it in order to try and establish, at least from their point of view, uh, what happened is an indication that they also realise that this is a major moment uh, in the, uh, the conflict so far. Alistair, thank you. Alistair Bunkle in Jerusalem for us tonight. Let's go to Washington. Our US correspondent Martha Kellner is standing by because, of course, President Joe Biden is preparing. OK, so what's interesting about that, I felt, was um, the fact that MSF, Medicine Frontier, were already ready to say it was Israel. And I guess that was probably why the media jumped on it a little bit, because it's a well-respected organisation. And I guess the rest of the world jumped on that as well, and that protest started, and uh, the talks with Biden were cancelled because they believed it was Israel that did it. Israel since have put out lots of data showing video evidence trying to show that it's not them, and that's why it's dangerous, isn't it? You can hold on to something that you want to believe. That's what confirmation bias, that's a big example of it. People wanted to believe it was Israel that did it so they could, you know, just go against them. And then it turns out that it's not. And then, but people are not willing to sort of say, okay, I was wrong and, you know. But also what interested me is why this hit resonated so much when you know, other places have been hit, you know, like universities and mosques. Um, and, you know, already, was it 3,000 people? I don't know who's counting these bodies. Um, already died, and that didn't spark the street. But this one hospital, and actually in the video, when they show the pictures, it only really shows the car park and people looking in the car park. So it doesn't actually look like the hospital was actually here. It was, it was the car park, but the media ran with it to, to make a big story and then of course that lit the touch paper so it does show how confirmation bias and the media can be very dangerous sometimes of course it's you know i mean i'm not there so i can't verify anything and especially with and uh, i think i can find her interview when she asked the guy did you do it and he gets really irate i think that was coming up soon Some sought shelter in schools run by the United Nations. Hello, good evening. Live from Jerusalem, nowhere is safe. We begin tonight with the words of the man who leads the United Nations efforts inside Gaza. Philippe Lazzarini released his statement after a school where up to 4,000 people were sheltering was hit by an apparent airstrike. Shortly after, he told the world about what he described as a flagrant disregard for civilian life, came the news of what could well be the deadliest airstrike of the war so far. The attacks come after more than 600,000 people fled northern Gaza seeking safety. Many made their way south down the main highway. Some sought shelter in schools run by the United Nations. At least six people were killed this afternoon after an airstrike on one such shelter in El Maghazi. And now the Palestinian Health Ministry says as many as 800 people were killed in a separate strike on Al-Ali Al-Arabi Hospital in Gaza City. 
Well, in the last few minutes, Israel has denied any involvement and has blamed the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Tonight, there have been protests in Ramallah on the West Bank with groups of people throwing stones at Palestinian security forces. John Sparks has tonight's first report and a warning it contains video of people with injuries. No one expects an attack on a hospital, but it seems hundreds have been killed in a brutal assault. The facility in Gaza City is called the Al Ali Arab and much of it has been destroyed. Gaza's health ministry oh, had blamed the China. Israelis, calling it inside. an act of genocide. <laughs> Many of the hospital's occupants, both patients and displaced residents, have been readmitted to Gaza's largest medical facility called Al Shifa. The emergency room floor now covered in bodies. It is the deadliest event in Gaza for many years and it has attracted international condemnation. The diplomats have been talking about safe zones and assistance while Israel hammers Gaza with airstrikes. These images taken in the city of Deir al-Bala. It's in a section of the strip where civilians were instructed to seek shelter, yet hundreds have been killed here in the past 24 hours. Nearby, in the city of Khan Yunus, a boy called Kinan is brought to the front door of the hospital. His body has been pulled from the rubble, and the doctor looks for signs of life. But the seven-year-old is dead. Finished, says the mother. The boy is carried to the back of the hospital. So young, says this orderly, have mercy upon us. A woman cries as he's brought into a compound where the bodies are prepared for burial. The majority here consumed with grief. Their loved ones wrapped in sheets, some blood soaked and laid in rows. God will take revenge on you, Israel, and hell to the Arabs, hell to those who watch and do nothing. I hope your blood wasn't shed for nothing. Our team watched as dozens of bodies were brought into the hospital. The victims of at least four separate airstrikes on Khan Yunus. This city of refuge enveloped by the war. We found the survivors being treated inside. Some had been injured in the bombardment, others caught in the debris. And the wounds were clearly physical and psychological. Don't worry, Abdullah is fine, said this man covered in dust. Please stay with the kids, stay with the kids. There are no safe houses here. No safe hospitals, not even the schools or ambulances. There's no safety, nothing like that. They thought Khan Yunus offered some security. And its location in the south has drawn tens of thousands of evacuees, some taking shelter in these buildings. Haji Mahmoud, are you in there? calls this man. But there are no safe zones in the Gaza Strip. There is nowhere left to hide, it seems. A crisis has turned into a catastrophe. John Sparks, Sky News. Well, in the last hour, the Israeli Defense Forces have responded to the attack. We don't have all the details yet. We will check, but it's difficult to respond straight away. This was an attack that happened not long ago, and the numbers of dead are already like that. We will get the details, we will know the facts, and we will update the public. Because there are lots of airstrikes, and there are also lots of misfires, and also a lot of false reports from Hamas, 
We will learn the details and we will tell the truth to the public. Well, I'm joined now from Tel Aviv by Mark Regev, senior advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, and a former Israeli ambassador to the UK. Um, good evening to you. Was it you? Apparently not. Uh, we're the whole time gathering more information. And now the highest probability appears to be that this was uh, an Islamic Jihad rocket. Uh, and as crazy as that sounds, uh, the statistics are clear. In past rounds of fighting, some 33% of Islamic Jihad rockets that were fired into Israel uh, fell short and landed in Gaza. Now, our intelligence is reporting to us that there was Islamic Jihad uh, uh, fire which was over the vicinity of the hospital, and apparently a rocket malfunctioned and hit the hospital. We had such documented case in the last round of fighting, I think it was in 2021, uh, where everyone said Israeli uh, atrocity, we hit a target, we killed an innocent family, and in the end, we could prove with a video that they, it was their rocket that was launched, and we actually saw the rocket land. Now, of course, uh, in Gaza, there is no independent civil society. Uh, the Hamas has ruled there for 16 years, uh, and all the voices that you interview will say Israel, 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 because that's the party line. But I urge... Uh, uh, to caution. I urge people to think about this. You've got to hold off judgment. Uh, 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 we don't believe it's us. We're still looking, of course, uh, but we don't believe it was us. And all the evidence seems to indicate that this was a rocket fired by Islamic Jihad. That's Hamas's younger brother. Uh, it's twin terrorist organization. And they, uh, uh, it was their ordinance. Uh, we do not target hospitals. Let's be clear. Israel does not target hospitals. Well, it's not just the party line, is it? I've stood at the border myself. I've seen your airstrikes on apartment buildings. You have the capability to cause utter devastation to the people of Gaza City. That's what's happened tonight. The, the real fact of it is, whatever is the cause of this, it might be too late. The touch paper has already been lit. Do you understand that? But if, 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 if the paper is being lit, to use your metaphor, by a lie, by Hamas propaganda, blaming Israel for something that it didn't do, surely you should be saying that. And we should be trying to make the world understand that Hamas, which has no qualms about killing brutally innocent Israelis, has few qualms, qualms about lying. Why would they admit that it was a terrorist missile that killed their own people? Of course, blame Israel. But it's our job, and I would say it's your job in the media, to get to the truth and not to parrot just the Hamas position. Israel, Israel is responsible for everything that goes wrong. I mean, obviously Hamas will say that. Well, how quickly can you prove that it wasn't you if it wasn't? The point is that people in places like Ramallah, in fact, across the Middle East, will blame Israel. And therefore, I put it to you that your proof may come too late. It, that's possible. I mean, there are people across the entire Middle East who are willing to say, uh, believe the worst things about Israel and about Jews. Uh, they have all sorts of stereotypes, yes, but surely responsible people must hold off judgment until the facts are in, and I urge you to do the same. Even before this incident, we heard from the World Health Organization today that 2,800 people in Gaza had lost their lives, 11,000 had been injured. Those weren't all misfired rockets. Uh, you know you are causing civilian deaths in Gaza, and many will now say that after this, enough is enough. So, first of all, I know there's a tragedy unfolding in Gaza, and this is a war that has taken too many lives on our side. But those numbers you quote, they stem from the Hamas-controlled Ministry of Health in Gaza. That's where those numbers come from. How many of those were combatants? If you tell me that all those 2,000 were Hamas combatants, I'd say to you, good, that's who we want to kill. But of course, the Hamas Ministry of Health isn't telling you how many were combatants and how many were civilians. And of course, they're telling you their impression is, oh, they're all innocent people. No, you have to be skeptical. This is a regime, a Hamas regime, that just a week ago, you saw the sort of brutality it's capable of doing, and yet you're believing its press releases. Can the US president still come tomorrow? I see you've just put out a media note about the timings of his meetings with Mr. Netanyahu. Uh, it's best he doesn't come, isn't it? I, I disagree. 
I disagree. And, and it's not just he's coming. Your prime minister, the British prime minister is supposed to come. The French president is supposed to come. The German chancellor was here today. And the truth is the world has been outraged, not by Hamas propaganda, but by Hamas's actions. The world has been outraged by the brutal massacre of innocent people uh, on, on October 7th. The world has been outraged by the beheadings, by the ISIS type violence, uh, by the the lining up of people and shooting them in pits, the murdering of babies, the kidnapping of some 200 people and abducting them back to the jail. That is the true story here, not Hamas's propaganda and this sort of false equivalence between a democratic society that is defending itself from a terrorist threat and between a group of ISIS type terrorists who, 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 who butcher Israelis and treat their own people, the people they claim to resent, uh, even worse. Well, so Mohammed uh, Abbas, uh, the Palestinian leader, has already pulled out of that four-way meeting uh, in Amman in Jordan. Uh, we'll see what happens with the Egyptian president, uh, even uh, King Abdullah of Jordan. We'll see what happens with that. You know, this idea of consensus over meeting Joe Biden is already falling apart. Um, you know, the moral equivalence of what happened in that terrible, terrible day on October the 7th, does that allow one war crime to follow another? I disagree. Uh, 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 there's no comparison. You're saying they commit war crimes, we commit war crimes, we're all equally bad. That's, that's not true. Can I remind you that when the international community united to fight ISIS, yes, ISIS controlled territory. In that territory, there were cities. Uh, famously in Mosul in 2016, in defeating ISIS, there were unfortunately civilian casualties. But defeating ISIS was the goal and the world is better with ISIS defeated. It's the same with Hamas. We are trying to avoid civilian casualties. The people of Gaza are not our targets. Hamas is our target. Hamas is responsible for this war. Israel res is responding to violence that was inflicted upon it. We are targeting Hamas's military machine. We don't want to see innocent civilians caught up in the crossfire. I'd like to be able to tell you at Sky News that we can promise there won't be a single civilian hurt in this war. But you know that's impossible. There hasn't been a war in modern history where, where, where civilians haven't been caught up in the crossfire. But what I can say is the representative well, if, if of a democratic society, the we will make every effort. We will make every effort to minimize uh, uh, civilian casualties. Hamas, however, does the opposite. When we ask Palestinians you, to leave combat areas. You may want to areas, do that, but it is not happening. It is not Why do you say that? Visit. Because you believe Endlessly, Hamas propaganda that Israel is responsible for these deaths? That's, are you, that's are you the basis saying that of every image we see on our television screens has been fabricated from somewhere else? That every child we see pulled from rubble and taken to a, a hospital running out of supplies is a fake picture? And in Mosul, there weren't difficult pictures as well. War is very, very difficult. We don't want to see civilian casualties. But who is responsible so, so for sorry, this war? Are you saying, who is re are you who saying is there is collateral damage war? of civilians, or are you not saying that? I am saying the civilian population but, of Gaza is suffering. I am saying that there are civilian casualties. I am saying we are making a maximum effort to minimize those casualties, as Britain does when it fights wars. We, are, we don't want to see civilian casualties. But we cannot allow Hamas to have immunity, just as you didn't give ISIS immunity when you defeated it in 2016 in Mosul. Don't judge Israel by a standard. You don't judge yourself. That's not fair. Well, you know, that was led by Iraqi and Kurdish forces uh, in Mosul. I happen to be there. With the British time, support, actually, correct. With falling. British support, British air power. No, I, I think the British did the right thing in defeating Hamas, in defeating ISIS. They did the right thing. They saved the world from evil people. ISIS had a territorial caliphate do, do you in Iraq them? and Syria. But can't you understand that Hamas has got the same sort of terror enclave? They've taken over territory. They've butchered our people. They treat the people of Gaza terribly. It's time Hamas was finished. We will destroy their military machine and we will dismantle their political uh, structure. And in doing so, we are actually doing a favour to the people so of doing, Gaza. In destroying Hamas, in, in destroying Hamas, you will destroy Gaza. Do you accept that that is? I don't accept end that. I don't accept. I don't accept your that. Your campaign. 
Well, I don't accept you, you that. Yourself I, I think say that, that Hamas I don't accept the rationale that they use human shields uh, to protect themselves. So how they do you get to Hamas without killing civilians, which is what seems to be happening? So we are going to make a maximum effort to hit the Hamas machine without without uh, 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 doing what we can to avoid civilian casualties. Are you telling me? H how many that because uh, no, but I'm asking. May I please already? answer? Allow, allow your your satellite question. surveillance you could probably count that Hamas for you. How immunity? many apartment buildings you have destroyed? How many civilian buildings you have destroyed in Gaza City? We don't City target. We don't target civilian Gaza structures. Strip. That is incorrect. What you've said. We don't target civilian Most structures. We so what are? We ta so what are those high-rise buildings we've seen Gaza. destroyed? In Beit Hanun, on the border targets. that I've seen with my own eyes. They are Hamas what, targets. What, all of the buildings? The, what we target are Hamas strongholds. And here you have to understand, and please let me finish a sentence. Hamas embeds itself under the civilian population, under the city of Gaza. There's a network of tunnels. There are there are their rocket sites to launch rockets to attack our people. There are uh, arms depots. There are command and communications. Hamas has got a subterranean under civilian neighborhoods. They have a huge military machine. Now, are you saying that Israel is supposed to give them immunity? No, we've asked the civilians to leave the area. But we're doing what Britain would do there's, in our case. I'm there firmly has to be that. another way. There has to what, don't what be is, written so into please, this. There tell has me to the be other another way. way. The other way is to give what? Hamas immunity. That's the other way to allow these butchers to kill our people and just turn the other cheek. Would you do that in Britain? She didn't know what to say. This is not about Britain. This is about of, of what you are doing. Of it, course, it's Israelis to, dying. The, so the then areas we're not in Gaza, which have been flattened, no, which is the homes no, of civilians. You are holding Israel to even in Khan Yunus, where you're asking you are people to Israel flee. To there have been right. airstrikes. You are holding Israel to a standard Continue. that you own, don't hold your own country to. That's the truth. That's the truth. I'm just saying that this is not about terrorism. We are responding to violent, barbaric this is about terrorism. Final thought. When will you be able to give your truth that you say this was not an airstrike by Israel? I hope as soon as possible. But I urge you, why are you believing Hamas propaganda? At least be skeptical. Mark Regev, thank you for your time. Thank you. I think uh, he makes a good point. In, in, like I say, in the maxim in war, the first casualty is truth. But we should be sceptical of everyone. Because, yes, Hamas are going to say, you know, like 800 people died in, that, in the car park of a hospital. The hospital was never hit. And I don't know why the journalists were saying that when they could actually see the video of only the car park and the, all the buildings look perfectly fine and not on fire. So they shouldn't have, they should have been saying it was a car park of the hospital who got hit. And obviously, the, the, I don't know, there may have been loads of people outside, but 800 seems a lot. But obviously in war, you know, you know, I remember I did history and they used to show us the posters in the First World War to get support in Britain. They used to put posters of, um, was it the First World War? The Germans, like, as if they, uh, of, of raping a, um, a woman. And it was a poster, and the idea was to invoke the hate, you know, because you have to create these characters, and you have to create the, the feeling, and you know, that's propaganda. That's what I'm talking about. So we know that all happens, but it happens on both sides, and it happens with the West as well. That's why Anna should have said, but maybe she doesn't believe it, that what was done in Iraq and Afghanistan was also wrong and illegal, and then she could have gotten out of that, but. Maybe she thought that was okay, what was done to them. But that, that's, this is why I don't like war and why I believe wars are, <sighs> don't really solve anything other than killing people. But then I guess in the world we live in, where we've allowed, because of our system, you know, of dividing us up uh, into different peoples, dividing our land, dividing, you know, all these things that, that allows this hate to grow, and then when it's grown, what do you do? Here's the next one. Right. I'm not sure what this one is. Wait. 
think that's the same one. I mean, we'll get the next one. But it's a shame that uh, the other journalists don't take that kind of approach, Pat. You know, that, you know, Pat is right. We need to be critical of all sides in war, no matter who they are, even if they're the West. Look at the West. They lied about the weapons of mass destruction, the report. Our Prime Minister and President lied to the people that there were weapons of mass destruction that were never found just to get us in, in a war. They broke international law when they did regime change, which is against international law, by replacing the heads of Iraq and Afghanistan. But of course, they allowed the people to murder them so that they could do that. Necessary. But as far as the foreign aid mm -hmm. fund is concerned, increasing it to 0.7%, is that something that you still feel strongly about? Well, the government's made clear that, uh, I certainly do, the government's made clear that uh, when the two fiscal tests that were set um, at the time when Parliament agreed to the reduction are satisfied, that that, that money will increase. And it's interesting to note that money. the Treasury at the time office. of the budget in March money. indicated What's that they expected money? it would come back in the uh, financial year 2027-2028. We are expecting a grand offensive. One would assume that that is not going to, in Bureaucracy Gaza, I would assume that's not going to happen until after the US president has left the area. Is there anything the UK can do to try to stop that happening? Well, Israel has an absolute right to defend itself. We've seen the most appalling events take place, which the Prime Minister described as a pogrom. This is the worst attack on Jewish people at any time since the end of the Holocaust and the Second World War, and Israel will exercise its right to self-defense. And it's interesting to note, too, that Israel uses its army to defend its citizens. Hamas uses its citizens to defend Hamas. You are content that the um, IDF, uh, the Israeli Defense Force, will use appropriate um, retaliation, if that's the right word, but will go no further. I think it's very clear uh, from all we know about the IDF, the training they undergo, the respect for humanitarian law, the statement by the President of Israel that Israel will abide by international humanitarian law, that they are exercising the proper restraint in respect of civilians. But we should be quite clear, Israel has an absolute right to self-defence. Um, the only problem is with that, yeah, we already know they've broken international law, no? Several times, the siege, the, the turning off of water, electricity, food, isn't that against international law? I'm, I'm, I googled it and it came up with the Geneva Conventions, uh, the moving of one people from one area to another. I, I understand, I've heard people talk about that already, is that against international law, collective punishment. So the problem is, they're saying, yeah, they're going to follow international law. Wait a minute, you already know they haven't. No one's going to do anything about it. It's just words. It's four square behind Israel uh, in these terrible circumstances and the appalling events which have taken place. The uh, ambassador, uh, Israeli ambassador to the United Kingdom, sat where you were yesterday. She said that there is uh, not, not a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Do you agree with that? Well, it's clear that an enormous number of people have heeded the warnings and moved to southern uh, the southern part of Gaza. That is why we are looking at ways of getting urgent humanitarian support into southern Gaza. And it's the reason why I explained the, what the UN and what the Americans and we are trying to do to support people who are in great danger in southern Gaza. So just to be clear, is there a humanitarian crisis in Gaza or not as far as the British government is concerned? Well, there is a looming uh, humanitarian <laughs> crisis, which is why we're all so focused on trying to do everything we can to relieve it. What's the difference between looming and it already being there, given two and a half thousand Palestinians or thereabouts have already died? Uh, they are lacking in water and, and any basic human supplies. Well, the, the, Israel went to some lengths yesterday to make sure that the water supply was uh, restored. and it's Restored? It had been cut off. Yes, but, but, but that obviously True. helps uh, very significantly. But it's important to note, too, that the pipes supplying the water have been dug up by Hamas and other terrorists and used as weaponry against Israel. So, so I think I think that uh, uh, it was uh, the right thing to do, and Israel should be credited with having taken that humanitarian action. Palestinians. Wait a minute. It was the right thing to do for two weeks to turn off the water, which, unless I'm understood, is against international law, for humanitarian reasons. Let's just hear that one more time, because surely he'll be culpable now. For saying such a support. Hamas and 
other terrorists and used as weaponry against Israel. So, so I think I think that uh, uh, it was uh, the right thing to do, and Israel should be credited with having taken that humanitarian action. Palestinian sources are telling us this morning that areas where um, refugees have been sent um, are the victims of airstrikes this morning. Well, I think I think that is incredibly unlikely, and I point you to the words of the Israeli president about international humanitarian law. Uh, airstrikes, we know, have been used in northern Gaza and have uh, started to degrade the command structure of uh, Hamas. Now, that's what we read in the papers, and that is all part of Israel's absolute legitimate right to defend itself. Mm. As far as Hamas is concerned, I must let you go after this question. As far as Hamas is concerned, what does the British government think should happen to Hamas leaders who are presently sheltering in places like Qatar? Well, the Hamas leaders are guilty of the most heinous uh, crime and the Israeli government will hunt them down and either bring them to justice or they will be uh, killed during the course of the military action that takes place. Whichever border they have to cross in order to achieve that? The Israeli government has an absolute right to self-defence and in these circumstances that clearly involves uh, destroying the Hamas terrorists who perpetrated this terrible, terrible act. Including going to Qatar to take them out? Well, I can't possibly comment on anything uh, like that. Um, first of all, I don't know. And secondly, we would never uh, comment on, on, on such matters. But uh, the Israeli government has an absolute right to defend itself. And I hope that is something which all of us can agree on uh, today in these very difficult circumstances. OK, we are out of time. But I did just want to ask you about the, um, the Palestinian um, stage that was erected by the senator. OK, that's better, doesn't really matter. It's very troubling, him. I mean, if, if, if uh, any country goes into another country and drops bombs on things, that could spark a war because that is, you know, it is like the touch paper, you know, the, the requirement for war, isn't it? And he doesn't, I mean, no country should be bombing another country without, well, I assume UN resolutions if they're part of the UN. I, I think it's a very dangerous precedent to just allow you know, oh, let's just, you know, go over there and drop some bombs and then start a war. You know, they're telling other people not to get involved. Don't was the word Anthony Blinken and Joe Biden have been using. Don't get involved. We're allowed to give weapons, but you don't get involved. But it's okay for Israel to go to other countries and drop bombs because they believe Hamas may be there, which may well be true, but it's in another it's sovereign's territory in which... I don't know, that, that seems very troubling that he's not making that clear, though. No? I don't know. Well, but this is the kind of thing that America did in with Iraq and Afghanistan. And now Israel f following suit with that. Because there was reports that they bombed airports in Syria, but I never saw any more reports on that. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Kay. Joining me now is the former Deputy Foreign Minister of Israel, former Ambassador to the United States, Danny Ayalon. Thank you very much indeed for being with us this morning. And let's talk first about uh, Joe Biden, his visit, clearly to show um, support for Israel, to stand with Israel and their response uh, to this hideous attack, but also some concern about the way it is done. Well, uh, well, first of all, there is a great understanding by uh, Biden, the administration, the United States, and the, let me say also the allied NATO, uh, major NATO countries, that uh, the war here is not just between Israel and the Hamas. Actually, the entire uh, Western civilization is at stake. And basically, what we see here, the line in Gaza is really drawn in the sand between the diabolical teaching and doing of uh, the uh, jihadists. Uh, movement which uh, has many many uh, tentacles be it uh, Al Qaeda or ISIS or Hamas or Hezbollah all masterminded by Iran and uh, aided and supported economically and politically by China by Russia and on the other hand uh, we have uh, the free world we have the Western democratic countries which is an anathema to this uh, global jihad which uh, would like to take us out yeah, and if you look at the map you know, Israel is a small country, but our position is the most uh, strategic one because we are like a cork that is stopping this uh, global jihadist uh, from gushing out of the Middle East towards Europe 
and then later on towards America. The Israel is also very helpful to the moderate uh, Sunni Arab regimes, whether it's in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, and uh, Abrahamic Accords, uh, Emirates, uh, against toppling them by Iranian forces, whether it's the Houthis in Yemen, Hezbollah we mentioned, Hamas we mentioned, the uh, militia, the uh, Shia militias in um, Iraq, Syria, they are in Libya, they are in Sudan, they are all over, Boko Haram, in Africa, if you may. It's, it's, a, it's a global war. Yeah. yeah. And just on, yeah, just on the point of um, uh, the global situation, what do you make of Iran's warning today about uh, the resistance, as they say, taking uh, preemptive action? What do you make of that? Well, the Iranians really, as, as you mentioned, they are the perpetrators. Without them, uh, the Middle East would have been much, much calmer, more stable, and, and more peaceful and prosperous. But Iran is not confronting us directly. They're using their proxies, and they're ready to fight until the last Palestinian, until the last Lebanese, until the last Iraqis or Syrian, and Yemen, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I, I think once this war is over with, with Hamas, and maybe with Hezbollah as well, there should be a reckoning in the international community uh, how to proceed with this uh, regime in Iran, which does not represent the people yeah. of Iran, but this is like a Nazi right regime with global aspirations and destruction. It has to be reckoning for Iran. Danny, just, I just, we've only got a minute or two left. I just want to ask you about the Israeli response. Um, will it be in accordance with international law? And why are you still enforcing this blockade, given that the, the people have moved, as you asked, from north to southern Gaza? Why can't you lift that blockade and allow some aid in for the people who are really struggling there in southern Gaza? Well, we, we will have to, uh, to continue according to international law. This is pretty much what we are about. And international law today is uh, dealing with uh, nothing short than crime against humanity. And uh, we have to just uh, open the, the books of history and remember what the Allied forces, Britain, uh, uh, US and others demanded from the Nazis unconditional surrender and yeah, this is my, what my, Danny my point was just on the blockade my point was just I'm sorry to interrupt you it's a time issue my point was on the blockade why can't you lift that well what we are the, the, it's, 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 the it's collective punishment the UN is saying it's collective punishment of the people in southern Gaza so 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 we say no we say that the people of Gaza should evacuate and go to the vast expenses on the other side of Rafa you know, in, in the Sinai border in Egypt, where they should be uh, hosted with shelter. They're not and being allowed. They're not well, being allowed they, to do that. They, 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 they don't will, want to go. They don't want to go to another refugee camp in the Sinai desert or whatever. They want to be not, safe in Gaza. That's where they live. It's not that they don't want to go. They will return. It's the Hamas who's preventing them. And Egypt will have to accept them, just like Turkey okay. accepted 4 million refugees of uh, uh, they, they were butchered by Assad. This is the way to do it. We evacuate our own people from the front line. We evacuate our own people to save their lives. This is what we expect for the people of Gaza. We want to spare okay. their lives, and in order to do that, they have to leave. Okay, well, that's a decision for Egypt to take, but Danny, I'll own up. I'm sure that's against international law. You want them to go to Egypt and be refugees there from their own state and may never return. That sounds very troubling, no? Uh, Egypt, after that, although that has not been uh, confirmed, uh, briefings that had been planned with other Arab leaders have been cancelled as a result of what happened uh, with the hospital strike in Gaza overnight. Uh, Amy Shalan, chair of the British Palestinian Committee, is with us. Hi, it's good to see you. Thanks Hi. for joining us. We chatted um, earlier on in the week. Who do you think is responsible for what happened last night? Um, I, this isn't a question of two different narratives. Uh, I think what we need to really reflect on here is the fact that 25 hospitals have been ordered to evacuate by Israel. 
Al Ahli uh, Hospital has already been struck a couple of days ago by a smaller missile, um, and there has been very clear warnings that have been given uh, to hospitals that they are going to come under attack. And in addition to that, we've had language coming uh, from Israel which has been very clear uh, that it considers Palestinians in Gaza to be human animals and that they will act accordingly. Uh, and uh, uh, they have also said that uh, Gaza will never be the same and that they intend to eliminate everything. So I think that's the context in which we have to look at the attack on al Ahli Hospital. When you say they, who do you mean? The Israeli government, spokespeople. We've had countless people. Uh, that was uh, the talking about eliminating uh, Gaza. That was the Minister of Defence. Hamas. Sorry? Eliminating Hamas. No, they said we will eliminate Gaza. They said Gaza, his, his exact quote was, Gaza will never be the same. We will eliminate everything. I'll take your word for that. I haven't seen that specific quote. Talk to me, though, about why you think that it's not important who actually carried out the... Who was I responsible didn't say for the attack? So, so who is responsible? So uh, I think th this is clearly a war crime. I think everything points towards it being Israel uh, who has uh, conducted this attack. We have seen this information before. I think it's very important that what is called for now is an immediate ceasefire to stop any further uh, atrocities unfolding. We have human rights organizations being exceptionally concerned that what we are seeing is a genocidal attack on Gaza. Um, and we know that misinformation has come from Israel with previous attacks. We saw in the case of Shireen Abu Akleh that there were out-and-out -out denials that it was uh, an Israeli soldier that had shot and killed her. Then it was that she was caught in the ceasefire. And finally, there was an admission that it had indeed been an Israeli sniper who had shot and killed her, but that no action would be taken. Um, so I think we need to look at it in that context and ensure that regardless of who carried out a cease that attack on Al Ahli Hospital, a ceasefire has to be called for now, and any war crimes have to stop. Likelihood of that happening, in your opinion? Well, it all depends on the international community and essentially the unconditional support for Israel has led us to where we are now, today. And that's the US government, as we've just heard, uh, US President Biden uh, giving unconditional support, but also the UK government who have been put on notice that they are essentially supporting uh, what could uh, amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity in Gaza, and that they could be criminally liable. Um, so we've seen uh, both the government, the UK government, and the opposition coming out in full support of Israel's, as they say, right to defence. Within international in, law is what they said. Well, they said that, but exactly they also supported, they also supported in the same breath we heard Keir Starmer support the complete siege on Gaza, which is against international law. And essentially, if there are, are weapons and military support going to Gaza uh, now, but also diplomatic support, because international uh, states have a duty to protect people from potential acts of genocide. And we are now hearing uh, very clear claims that what we are seeing is essentially an impending genocidal assault on Gaza and international states have a clear duty to prevent that. I'm afraid we are out of uh, time, Amy, Rose. that's the end of the show, but um, I would like to be able to talk to you again perhaps next week. We can talk further on what's happened and the, the appeal for um, a ceasefire where that takes us over the next few days. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to join us. Uh, Joe Biden has arrived in uh, Tel Aviv. Um, he is likely to be there for several hours. She looked like she was just about to cry. Right, here's the next one. People of the world, to know where the United States stands. I've had my great Secretary of State here. He's been here for a lot. But I wanted to personally come 
and make that clear. Well, let's just take you through uh, the day's key developments so far. As we heard, the Gaza Health Ministry says at least 500 people have been killed in that explosion at uh, a hospital there. A summit between the leaders of Jordan, Egypt, uh, the Palestinian Authority, and of course the US President Joe Biden, well, that was cancelled after the hospital explosion. And mass protests, uh, protests have taken place across the Middle East in the West Bank, in Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan and Iran following uh, the explosion in Gaza. The former Hamas leader Khalid Mashal has called for demonstrations in front of Israeli embassies across the world. Well, the explosion happened as Palestinians were taking shelter in the building amid Israeli bombings and the blockade of the territory. More than 500 people died and uh, doctors have been desperately working to save injured victims. Overwhelmed by the number of injured, uh, doctors have even resorted to performing surgery on floors in the corridors of the hospital. Well, earlier this morning, the Israel Defence Force gave an update on its version of what happened. This is what they had to say. According to our intelligence, Hamas checked the reports, understood it was an Islamic Jihad rocket that had misfired and decided to launch a global media campaign to hide what really happened. They went as far as inflating the numbers of casualties. They understood with absolute certainty that it was a rocket misfired by Islamic Jihad that damaged the hospital. Analysis of our aerial footage confirms that there was no direct hit to the hospital itself. The only location damage is outside the hospital in the parking lot where we can see signs of burning, which I will show later, no cratering and no structural damage to nearby buildings. This is the area of the hospital, okay? We are showing the parking lot and the hospital, okay? Those are in red spots. This is not in infrared, so you can understand it better. This is the parking lot. You can see the parking lot also now in this picture shown here, okay? Aftermath after the hit. There is no structural damage to the building. The walls stand intact. There are no craters here. All of the above, which I said, no structural damage. In addition, there are two independent videos which show the failure of the rocket launch and the continuation of rocket flight towards the ground within the Gaza Strip falling in the hospital compound. Third, we have intelligence, some that, will, some that will be shared here, of communication between terrorists talking about rockets misfiring. The terrorists realize that the rocket has misfired and made specific reference to the Al-Hali Al-Madani hospital. That was the IDF uh, spokesman speaking uh, this morning, our Middle East correspondent, Alistair Bunkle, joins us live now from Tel Aviv. And Alistair, uh, Joe Biden arriving, but that news conference by the Israelis was uh, before he touched down. They were very keen to set all this out before he got here. Yeah, it was a very detailed press conference with a lot of declassified intelligence by the Israelis to back up their position that they were not responsible for what happened to Al Ahli Hospital in Gaza City last night. And they say they have further intelligence that they will share with the Americans as well. It was a long press conference. He took many questions from the gathered journalists there. And I think the Israelis had worked pretty quickly and through the night to try and gather what they could to support their position. Um, now that Joe Biden is here, he is meeting with the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, and they will have a lot to discuss because there are a lot of moving parts at the moment. They will want to try, or certainly President Biden will want to try um, to get progress um, with the Israelis on releasing hostages. Biden will want to 
convince the Israelis to uh, get humanitarian aid into Gaza and allow some dual nationals from Gaza out into Egypt to some safety. I'm sure they'll be discussing what safe zones can be established within Gaza so that those stuck there um, can go to uh, a place of refuge. And then it will be the wider Middle East issue, how you dampen uh, the tensions that are abound at the moment. It's been very tense ever since those attacks. But after that attack on the hospital last night uh, and the number of dead, we're being told by the health minister in Gaza, which is Hamas controlled, we should say, 500, perhaps as many as 800, uh, things here are very, very fragile at the moment. Yes, and it was interesting, Alistair, that in his remarks with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, he talked about uh, innocent Palestinians who have nothing to do with this. The Americans, for, for however strong their support of Israel is, um, when there is a conflict with Gaza, but particularly in light of the horrific attacks uh, almost two weeks ago now, uh, the Americans are always very supportive of the Israelis uh, in public and their right to defend themselves, and I'm sure in private too. But there remains always a concern amongst US governments that the civilian death toll, which is always inevitable, does not get out of hand and rise too much. And so I imagine President Biden will want to know more about what the Israelis have got planned, how they intend on achieving their objective of eliminating Hamas, and how that can be achieved, if at all, without seeing the civilian death toll rise much more and without inflaming tensions around the region to such a point that Iranian proxies are dragged into this. Okay, let's leave it there. It's going to be a long one, is there? Maybe we have one more. Massacre has shocked the world and united Westminster. A minute of silence in the Commons chamber to honour the dead on both sides. Six Britons have been killed in this war, ten still missing. The elderly, men, women, children, babes in arms, murdered, mutilated, burned alive. We should call it by its name. It was a pogrom. The Labour leadership in lockstep with the government. Westminster is united. Britain is united <clears throat> with Israel against terror for international law and the protection of innocent lives. There are difficult days ahead, but our values cannot be compromised. Terror cannot win. There are senior figures concerned at the retaliation to come. We can support Israel and grieve with their people whilst recognising that how a counter-terrorism operation is conducted matters. And it matters because whilst there is an imperative to defeat Hamas in the immediate to secure Israel's future, how they are defeated will shape the region's future. The fiercest criticism of Israel coming from the left of the Labour Party. Will the Prime Minister make it clear to the Israeli government that indiscriminate airstrikes killing civilians is in clear violation of international law? Language like that has been rare in Westminster in recent days, a relative unity across the benches. Can it hold as this war moves into its next phase? Sam Coates, Sky News, Westminster. I think this is the problem, isn't it, you know? There's two things going on. Um, there's the, the massacre on October the 7th which we can all say quite clearly was a terrorist event, was, you know, was wrong, was inhuman, was the, the most horrific thing we've heard happen to Jews and Israelis since the Holocaust. The burning of people, the lining up, the shooting the children, all that stuff, the kidnapping, it's horrendous. The same as in with 9-11, the, the World Trade Center, coming down, all those people dying. I remember listening to the phone calls of some of these people, speaking to emergency services or their families. These were all innocent people. And, but the actions of governments in retaliation to these things 
is where I have a problem with. You know, I had a big problem with the the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan, and I'm I'm pacifist in nature. I'm sure there are reasons why there sometimes has to be wars, but I would prefer a world without them. But I know that's not the world we live in. But obviously, regime change and these weapons of mass destruction that weren't there. This was just about oil and about retaliation. I mean, the people. On, you know, what I'm trying to say is that you can have, you can feel the the horror for the, the victims of the people of these attacks of October seventh and nine eleven, whilst being critical of the response by the Americans, British, the West, and the Israeli government and in the October 7th. I don't believe that, you know, the bombing of innocent people, collective punishment, all that kind of stuff, the things that WikiLeaks revealed about what happened in Iraq and Afghanistan, all brings out the worst in people. We know, like in Vietnam, we know in the Second World War, from both sides, the, the horrific things that happened in the Holocaust that Germans did to their own people, to gypsies, to Joseph Witness, to Jews, all that to homosexuals, the most horrendous things that man can do against man. It, that's what comes out in wars. And war crimes, there's, I mean, I doubt there's any war that's ever happened where there hasn't been war crimes, whether there's minor or, or major. And that's the danger of war and the danger of retaliation, revenge. We wouldn't accept it in a criminal case. If someone's family got killed, we wouldn't accept that someone goes and then kills that other person's family. So I don't understand why we get it on a wide world, a wide world scale. Obviously, terrorists have to be caught. Criminals have to be caught. But of course, what we also need to look at is the root of problems as well. We can't deny that all babies are born innocent. What makes them into terrorists? What makes people into murderers? I'm not excusing those things. But we're all shaped. And if we can solve those shapings, then we can stop future terrorists and murderers coming about. And that should be our goal, really, our long-term goal. But there is no talk of any of things like that anywhere about anything. Take care, take it easy. God bless. Peace.